Hey everyone, Michael Bowman from Vertical Works here. Another quick lesson, UML and inher multiple inheritance. Hopefully I can keep it pretty short, under three minutes. Let's talk about the good old days, shall we? Class inheritance, multiple inheritance. In C++ in the old days, we had this thing called the diamond problem. So it goes something like this, you know, B inherits from A, C inherits from A, that's okay. No problems yet. But if D inherits from B and C, that's when the problem happens. Why? Well, if A has foo defined and it's an implementation, it's a class implementation of foo, and then C is getting it and B is getting it, which one does D use? Right? Which one? So that was the problem. Uh, that's why I have a question mark there. Now, boy, there's been a lot of wrangle in our industry about how to solve this, and you, you can go out and look on news groups, and there's been debates and everything else. But essentially, like in C Sharp, the language I love the most in .NET, right? C Sharp has, you can do one class inheritance, and then you can do multiple interfaces, and then you implement those interfaces. So you really don't have the problem because if you have foo and foo, you gotta, you gotta do it here. That's where the meat is gonna go. So it's up to you. So the problem's basically removed. Now some people say, well, it's not removed, it's still there. No, I don't think it really is because you gotta put it in. Now if this was abstract, you wouldn't have the problem. You know, so there's interface inheritance, and then you can take a class and flag everything as abstract. Is that the same thing? Right? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Okay, then, so like I said, inheritance this way is okay. Class inheritance, boom, 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 that's okay. It's when it splits off that it becomes a problem. Sorry, let me turn my speakers off. Anyway, I hope that makes sense to you. Now, you might want to go, when you're building classes, go study the Liskov substitution principle, you know, covariance, in contravariance, uh, preconditions, post conditions, all that, you know, single responsibility. There's just all kinds of wonderful things. Keep your classes simple. Um, and a matter of fact, on C Sharp, on C Sharp, we have extension methods, which is really cool. So if I need to add something to a class, I don't have to go in to that class, I can just build an extension method, right, and add to it. It's not actually adding to it, it's just kind of taking something I write and kind of hooking it on in a way so that when I'm coding with this, I've got all this other stuff too, that's pretty cool. And then there's partial classes too, but that's separate. In C Sharp, you can, you can have a class named foo, and then you can split it up into multiple files with partial so that you have multiple files and each file might work on a separate sub category of functionality and multiple you know one guy can have this file he's working on this part someone's working on this blah 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 and so in that context it might actually make the source code merge situation a whole lot easier it's actually kind of cool if you're using partial you know so essentially didn't want to get into this but if you have you know you parse doing partial stuff essentially what's happening is this is your class, this is the same class, but it's got a partial, it's a separate file, but it all gets merged up into the same thing. But if everyone's working on separate things, and it's really, you know, hairy stuff, I mean, that might make your merges a little easier, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's talk about something else now. There's lots of adornments in UML. Let's say this is a class, and this is a class, the big, uh, empty triangle means generalization. That means inheritance, and, uh, you know, cl uh, interface or class, whatever this is. This inherits from this. The straight line is an association, which means there is a link between the two classes. Here's a one to many. You know, this is called multiplicity. How many of this and how many of that? One to zero or more, or n, or asterisk. Sometimes you'll see an asterisk. That's called an association relationship. If that's got an arrow on it, like that, that means navigability. You can navigate from this to that. Um, meaning inside of here, you'll see a way to navigate right to that. Boom. It's not just that there's a dependency on that, but hey, I can navigate to that, right? This is composition, open diamond, closed diamond. Actually, so the difference here is this, both of these are composition, but one is stro a stronger form of composition. Let's talk about this one. This is weak. So 
I guess the classic example, actually, let's talk about this one. The classic example on this one would be like, I have a school and it has multiple classrooms. Um, you can't remove the classrooms from the school. They are there, right? That's what that means. This goes away, those go away. This is different. This could be something like, uh, it'd be easier. You know, I think the typical example is reservation and flight, something like that, reservation and flight, you know. Um, you get rid of the reservation, the flight doesn't go away, uh, that type of thing, right? You know, the plane's still gonna fly. So it's that type of composition. Um, anyway, I thought I would just mention that. Those, and then there's a lot of little adornments and you can even use UML to model relational databases because you do have multiplicity here. And, you know, so there's crow's feet relationships and UML notation. And if you're going to study one, you should probably do UML because that's what we're all supposed to be using in our industry, although most people don't know it. Anyway, if you have any questions, give me an email. This is Michael Bowman at verticalworks.com. Have a great day.